if someone you just met invited you to jump off of a cliff into a homemade rope swing, would you do it? This is a story about the kind of person who says yes to that invitation. A story that, in the pursuit of filming, ended up becoming one of the wildest weeks of my life, where every day it felt like there was a new stomach-dropping moment to say yes to. It started with the frantic packing of my camera gear, then heading in my van 20 hours out into the desert and doing everything I could to keep up with some of the most bold people I had ever met seeing firsthand what unfolds when three free solo record holders are all on the same project together. From hauling gear up desert towers to spending cold sleepless nights on top of those towers. All of this to hopefully get to see my friend Mia walk some steps on the most famous high line ever rigged. The line in question is in Castle Valley, Utah. And there is not a single video of slacklining I have been forwarded more than this video. What? Are you serious? It's unlike anything that I'd ever seen. A slackline so massive that to include a shot of the whole thing meant that you couldn't actually see the person on it. Of course, most famous is subjective, but I present the following argument. How many slacklines do you know that are rigged between the same desert towers as were featured in the iconic music video for Bon Jovi's Blaze of Glory. <laughs> Regardless of which Highline is actually the most famous, I knew one thing. I wanted to be there the next time that it was rigged. Enter Spencer. He's the first person I'd met who actually lived in a van, but more importantly, he's the first person I'd ever met who actually walked Highlines in the mountains. He not only walked them, he would take his harness off altogether and cross them with the only safety from falling being his two hands. It was through Spencer how I first met Mia. It was on a day that I'll never forget where Spencer had rigged one of his homemade rope swings. After riding off the waterfall in his inflatable dinghy, he then did a cutaway with one of his buddies into the swing. And he'd also offered me a chance to jump. I said no. <laughs> But Mia and her brother Elijah, they accepted the offer. And I had no way of knowing it then, but meeting Mia on that day would end up having a really big impact on my life. But across the next following months, I followed Spencer, Mia and crew on adventures that were more bold than anything I'd ever seen in person. We rigged bigger lines, Spencer did more free soloing, and Mia went from fearfully walking smaller lines to breaking records every time she stepped foot on a bigger line. The records and reputation didn't seem to interest her at all. In fact, it almost seemed to be getting in the way. But one thing I did know is that Mia wanted to walk the Castleton line. Pictures were saved to her phone and anytime goals came up, that was the first line at the top of the list. It was two years after the Castleton line was originally walked by Theo, I got the call from Spencer. Him and Mia were packing bags for Utah, and I was invited. After a frantic packing of the camera gear, it was time to head south. Let's get out of here. Somebody shared on Facebook the video of Theo's uh, record, and it was like just the biggest line ever walked. I mean, it was the world record, longest line ever been rigged, and it just seemed so ridiculous. At that time, I would have never imagined being able to rig it or even walk it. If we managed to re-rig this line for a second time, and if Mia was successful in walking it without falling, she would be setting a new world record. But it wasn't even an hour into the trip when I got the bad news from Spencer. Him and Mia had been denied entry at the border. Wait a day. After, after you're denied entry, you have to wait the whole day or the next day or the next... 24 hours, I, I don't know the exact It was story, still but. unclear exactly what had happened. Something about Spencer not being allowed to volunteer at a Slackline festival later that month. Spencer told me to just keep driving and that they'd eventually catch up. And as the hours rolled by, I couldn't help but think over some of the other projects Spencer had invited me to that hadn't exactly gone to plan. Hopefully the camera gear all stays dry. We'd set out to try rig a line that was more complicated than anything the crew had attempted previously. Hi, Mia. Hello. How are you? It's Cold. It was both longer than anything we'd rigged, but it was also in the Alpine. It's rained. It's just, we've just been in the clouds. 
Not only is it Alpine, but it's the longest line we've ever tried to rig. It's still cold. <laughs> I've literally lost it, Levi. <laughs> I just want to feel the sun so bad right now. We finally got our window when the clouds let off. If this is going to work, Levi, you need to be ready. Rigging this was more complicated than normal, with climbing separate sections necessary and plenty of coordination to even get the line across. Yeah, there's not enough webbing. I'm, like, I think I'm calling it right now. And we just watched the webbing fall down. And... It was the, it was that, was, there. It was there. that was heartbreaking, it was there. to say the least. A lot of tough lessons were learned on this project. These longer and longer lines were definitely more complicated to rig before we even got to the walking part. And to be honest, most of these projects that Spencer kept coming up with still scared me. So as my drive rolled on south and the hours kept flying by, one question kept nagging at me. If Spencer's project scared me, what kind of person would you have to be to be the one inspiring Spencer? My next guest wowed an international audience of millions with his incredible Super Bowl halftime show. He's the face of a new sport known as slacklining. Please welcome sketchy Andy Lewis. Thank you. Thank you. As long as I'd known Spencer, he'd talk about looking up to sketchy Andy. And it was Andy's free solo record that Spencer had gone on to add to. And it was this Andy that we were driving down south to meet up with. Yo, dude, what's up? How you doing, Mia? Yeah. Mia's doing good too. Moab, what up? So with Mia and Spencer just a day behind, it was time to head over to Andy's place and start prepping some gear. So we are at the Slack headquarters. Check this place out. Woo! The Slack HQ is uh, my house. It's all adventurous energy welcome. It's not just about the Slack lining, it's about life around it. That's why it's Slack life. Slack lining is one thing, but life is another. <laughs> There's Andy. Nice, is that the Sony AR? A6300. Oh, oh, I see how it is. I'm not fancy enough. Not what is Slack life to you? Because you define what Slack life is to yourself, and that is Slack life. And anybody who defines Slack life can create their own definition for it. And that is totally Slack life. <laughs> It's hard to explain to people what sketchy means and why I'm named Sketchy Andy and whatever stories come along with the name and my name kind of precedes me. <laughs> Sometimes there's a lot of stories that I don't even know who did it, but that wasn't me. And it um, wasn't something that I came up with or that I even wanted at first, but now I, I've learned to love it. Well, I think the first time I heard of Spencer was I saw some posts of people highlining in Canada over the chief and repeating lines and I heard of Spencer. Um, but what really like uh, got me was this video, the free solo video where he fell and caught a couple of times. And I was the only one defending him online. And, and I was like, no, this is kind of how you do it. You have to take some catches. It's like proud, it's not out of control. It's just learning. And that was probably the first time I heard of him, but meeting him was definitely a different thing too. Let me get the chicken back in. Chicken? Yeah, the chicken that just got out. <laughs> Get the chicken, Nick. After a full day at Andy's place, Mia and Spencer finally made it to Utah. <laughs> Glad you made it, buddy. You made it. <laughs> when I first started slacklining, you know, I would watch every single one of his videos. You know, my first set of pulleys I ordered from him. Yeah, he's been a huge inspiration for everything I've done. And to come down here and him put us up in, in his in the Slack Life headquarters, and yeah, it's pretty pretty sweet to be hanging out with with the guy you look at as your hero. <laughs> just weird to see somebody that he had seen videos of so much and then he's actually just there in front of you. Holy! Wow! This is amazing! Wow! wow. <laughs> Got room to even stretch. It's like the wind could push it to, yeah. I think do that. Arriving at, at Andy's place was 
it's just so exciting to finally be there. And it wasn't an hour later, we were rigging two short high lines and Andy didn't even bring a harness. So it was just a little free solo session. <laughs> It was the first time this trip that me and Freedy and Spencer, the three record holders right now that are still alive, that we've ever hung out together. And when we came in here and hung out together, the first thing I wanted to do is share a free solo with them. So I took them to my little solo garden where I go and free solo all the time because it's a quick hike, quick rigging, pretty good exposure. And that's why the area is called Good Enough. So there's the Good Enough High Line, there's the Addle Do High Line. And they're good enough and that'll do, you know? And it's just to get in the mindset and to free solo. I know, it always drives me crazy. He's like, oh, it doesn't matter, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, I'll get it in post. That's why it'll take me no, two years. Exactly. <laughs> okay, man, you know the hardest part about free soloing? First step, I think. Well, standing up is, well, the first step harder. is the first step. Exactly. You can't really. Did it feel good to solo? It felt really good to solo. I mean, it's sketchy Andy, the movie that like fired you up to solo. Yeah. And then like, when being you here, so yeah. Well, it's cool that we've all come together because like you could easily be influenced by people like from around the world just from watching videos, but to be able to meet them in the end and all of us like get together is pretty cool. And to share a free solo with Freedy and Spencer was amazing. They inspired me to do so much, I inspired them, and it was a full circle to come and then be doing it together and just do it for fun. It wasn't about numbers, it wasn't about the record, it wasn't about impressing anyone, it was just about doing something that we all shared. And it takes time to find people who can share that with you, and it takes time to meet them and want to be in their lives and be a part of their lives. And now that we've all come here and we're all pushing each other and doing this and that, we're all having fun doing more highlining than we've ever done, you know? Yeah, the training for Castleton right here. <laughs> we're here, we're gonna try to rig Castleton. We might get shut down. I don't know. Well, what do are we going to just ask for permission or for we, forgiveness? I, 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 I know. I mean, it's really hard to take that line down. No, it's not. I know. Oh, I get it. Sarcasm. Is, is it yeah. Cool. Everyone? I mean, the Castleton project was iconic because it was never possible before. When we first started doing tower high lines, the lines were 20 feet to 100 feet long. That was big back in the day, you know? And then we went and set like a 100 meter line in Yosemite with Jerry, and those were long tower high lines. And Castleton was just a mark of the new generation. And Castleton itself and the rectory are two iconic towers, and they're kind of test pieces that people always go. And the North Face and Fine Jade are two of the most splitter 511 cracks that you can climb on towers, like hands down in the area, probably some of the most climbed routes in all of Moab. And so to have a high line in between those two iconic towers that happens to be 500 meters long, that just is, it's so unique. And it's one of the longest, scariest things you'll ever see. I don't know. I don't want to be the one. I'm not walking these big 500 meter lines, so. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just start that way now. Main sliding. Yeah, why not? Okay. Castleton, you have to have a group. You can't rig that line alone. You just can't. When we haul the lines up, we're gonna have three separate bags of weapons. Well, I'm just saying it's kind of sketchy, so we have to just plan it out, you know? People have to be comfortable with moving across. The sketchy as he is, he's like, he, he plays the sketchy card, but like really, he's pretty calculated. 
if you say this is hard, I wonder how hard it is. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless of how you guys climb it, getting to the top isn't the hardest part. The hardest yeah. part is hauling that fucking webbing up and making this anchor and putting it in. If you go first and we'll follow and we'll all go that fast. Oh, dude. <laughs> no, he'll motor head. And he kept going through it like it was super complicated and I try to keep dumbing it down <laughs> just saying like you know we'll just rig it like any other high line I just think that around. if you look at it as a high line we just need to get the gear and the people to the anchors it's like yeah it's more complicated because it's two desert towers but like yeah that's kind of what I don't know that's the only difference really this this isn't a it's all right this man the like the weather line. all these things we all see the picture we all know the line we're rigging this we all know how to rig I'm the saying. line we just go there we do it we deal with the consequences as they come that's it. Uh, we have to go to bed pretty soon, actually. Yeah. You always have your camera in the face. Is that a new camera or is that still the other one? That is the same one, no? I'm so ready to go. That was a good one. Probably Andy right here. What happened to his car? Uh, deer. Jump. No, jump. You gotta step. You gotta go to the top. Push it more into your car. Like, well, that's an interesting way to start the morning. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Pretty exciting to come around the corner and see that big old tower. Mia's a ball of energy. She's always positive, always progressive, and super serious about the sport. She really loves the details about it. She loves learning rigging, helping rigging, breaking down people's walking styles and speed of walking and how they balance and this and that. She's very into it, and, and it shows in all of her actions, too. She's always the one who's like, let's go. Like, can we go already? Like, what are you guys doing? While the act of actually walking on a line is entirely personal, there is simply no way to do the sport without developing a strong community and crew to do it with. And the result of that is this unique vested interest that everyone has in each other. Everyone wants to see their friends do the best they can. They all like believe in me so much and sometimes it's strange to, they're just so positive, so sure. You know, it's a big line. There's, a lot of work to do and a lot of concentration for a good amount of time that you never know what can happen. We're gonna lay out all the gear. We've got a team on uh, each side climbing and we're gonna try and lay out the webbing in between, fix some static ropes, get this thing rigged. And the biggest concern about the Castleton line, like in general, are the airspace. There are planes and helicopters that fly there. I'm really struggling here, man. No, you're not. Go for it. Oh, it's so tight. Super lucky to have the Czech crew come and they just fired up the Castleton and then Katrina and Brent made their way up the, the rectory. I was super impressed by the, the skill level of climbers that we had just to like make it possible to get to the anchors. phone with flight services right now getting a notice to airmen set for Castle Valley Utah we're trying to get basically a, a warning out to Castle Valley that there's a high line in between Castleton and the rectory well now the lines up all the way here I find it kind of scary to actually see the line up now because I wanted to do it for so long and now 
it's that much closer to actually doing it. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Hopefully it's not gonna harm the... And the lens almost up. He's stuck on the top rock over there. Can we... Can you get up to there? Maybe check the line if you can. <laughs> Do you think he heard you on that? Can you check the webbing? Yeah, you got it. Oh. Up. Cause before you can imagine it, but now you can see it. It's actually there. That worked out. Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> See a shadow? Yeah, it was really cool to have the first day like that. We tensioned it and Freddy was on it before the sunset. Like it was up and rigged and sent in a day. Dude, how was that? That was uh, really cool and surprising. When you don't expect anything and just say, oh, I'm just gonna go to the middle, come back. Like, and when you're already worn out from a whole day of rigging, that's when the magic happens. That's when you're on site. <laughs> so Mia's turn tomorrow. Yay. Yeah. Tomorrow. I'm Getting to see Freedy on site walk this incredible line was really special. And excitement was definitely building, waiting for the next day when Mia would get her chance to walk. This line was just in my mind for so long. I remember seeing it on her phone, and she, she always had the dream of Castleton. It's not just another high line, it's not just another number. It's not like, oh, this is a 500 meter line, it's like the Castleton line. One of the reasons we all felt so confident in Mia's abilities was that her walking style was so unique. A good example is earlier this year, we had rigged a really long nylon line up in Canada. And most people attempting to walk a line this long try to move relatively quickly. 
the goal being to reduce fatigue and time spent on the line so you could actually get across it. Mia's walking style was this slow, methodical precision. So do you have a plan out there? <laughs> you know, take a few steps and have fun. I like that plan. <laughs> Time and time again, seeming to demonstrate she wasn't even aware of how much time she was actually on the line, showing a display of mental and physical endurance that was just astounding. Is it fun to see me out there? Oh, yes. Look, it's all good. <laughs> I trust her so much. Right. It's all yeah, no attachment to the, the end result. Oh. No stopping her. Yeah. She knows she's capable no. and she knows a lot of people trust in her. In her even more than she trusts in herself and she's supported right. by that and it's, it's quite awesome to see her surrounded by friends yeah. who you know trust her Mia three hours from 527 to 820 something seriously <laughs> I really need to learn how to walk faster <laughs> you got good progress on that line what I do you feel definitely do better <laughs> but but are you happy oh for sure So our second day with the line rigged in Castle Valley, Mia began ascending the rectory to the anchor of the line and everyone stopped what they were doing to watch. As the line went up, it definitely starts to feel real and it's definitely a little terrifying. It's always a little scary for me still. And as Mia walked her way out on this high line, she seemed as stable and confident as if she'd crossed it a dozen times already. I was repositioning to get a better camera angle when I looked up and saw that Mia must have lost her balance and had lowered and caught the line. Mia has just done so well on everything and because of that everyone has kind of put this pressure on her. Everybody just expects her to send and, and maybe that isn't a good pressure to have. You know it's a big line there's it's a lot of work to do and a lot of concentration for a good amount of time that you never know what can happen it's not guaranteed that you just walk across it. With Mia's walk coming to an end, it was really awesome getting to see other members of the crew getting their chance to go out and play on this incredible high line. I got the news that Mia and others were going to bivy on top of the tower to try get walking first thing in the morning and skip over the slow process of climbing the fixed ropes. I really wanted to be there seeing Mia get on the line. So I made my way up the tower to join them. And I felt such immense relief to actually be on top of the tower. The experience of ascending the ropes and that exposure to just the open air was definitely more than I expected it to be. And I was just struck with if ascending the fixed ropes was a challenge for me, how impressive it is to me when these slackliners head out to walk these massive lines. The mental endurance to even tie yourself into a line like this is just impressive. An empty hall bag became my sleeping pad for the night. But to be honest, on the cold November night, not much sleeping was taking place, but I was just so grateful to be here, to actually be in Castle Valley as the line was rigged, and to have all my gear ready to see Mia go out on the line again. When I get on a line that I know is longer than I have walked before, you know it, but as soon as you're tied in, you don't even think about that. It's just, it's just another beautiful line that you want to get across. And I only think about like the few steps I have to do 
and then you just you just repeat that the whole way. I just did a step closer to the edge here. Um, yeah, I know. Okay, so I am double backed, double backed, double backed. But as I sit on the line, I usually like bring my arms up and just look down the line, just how you'd be, same thing as standing up, but you're just sitting. And every big line sometimes is a challenge for me because I do walk fairly slow. I have to be ready to be on for a long time. And it's sometimes hard to be mentally ready to spend a few hours on the line. Just getting up and starting to walk. It's just you do what you're used to and you just walk. Open your eyes. What can you see around? Wind of the open sky. Over the siren sound. This is a dream, getting the royal scar Holding a diamond blade, throwing it far Holding your breath still, you jump the fire Yeah, not only is it a new PR for her, but it's also a women's world record longest tie line. <laughs> and now it's on nylon. If we rig it, she will send. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. It's just amazing to to get to walk a line that I once saw and thought that they would never walk something like that and to actually not so long after get to go walk it and walk it on nylon and just with the best group of people to do it too. You know? <laughs> Congrats on the new PR, Mia. We'll walk a bigger line soon anyways. <laughs> Maybe not on nylon, but we'll see. Getting to see firsthand Mia learn how to walk some of her first high lines, to continually push herself over and over again to walking longer and longer high lines, all while unapologetically just being herself, was something that I really looked up to. And I'm really grateful on how meeting Mia has changed me. A few days later, after the line was derigged, and I was finishing some interviews for this film, we'd ran into Ryan who'd set up a rope swing. And this time, I accepted the invitation. But I am dead serious, man. The one anchor on this, it's like just an overhanging rock. You want With to your weight, weight, man, it yeah, might just... Weight. Yeah! <laughs> sketchy andy the movie and slack life series and untethered and all this stuff is a bookmark in the history of slacklining and it will always be referred to in 20 years it will be referred to as and 
that's the cool thing is we are still in the golden era of this sport and we can't take that for granted. This is the beginning. This is where it starts. <laughs> Stay tuned next week to see if Levi makes it up to film something. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. This was one of the hardest things to film. Oh, for sure, dude. You're going to have to train for, like, bigger things, you know? <laughs>